Okay, welcome to the Viper Music Teacher Chat, where we're going to have a special guest on, June Armstrong, who I'm going to bring on in just a minute. Before we get there, though, hi, if I haven't met you yet, my name is Nicola Cadden. I'm a piano teacher over in Dublin and Ireland, and I run this YouTube show as well as the site Vibrant Music Teaching, which is a membership site for music teachers. And we provide tons of resources and fun stuff to help you teach more creatively and have more fun, more fun while doing it. And on this show, we give you the latest music teacher news, we have a special topic each week, and we do an Ask Me Anything and web review section at the end. Two little bits of news before our actual news, which is, first of all, how to ask a question. If you want to ask me anything or ask a question that you want to make sure we don't miss, please type the word question at the start of it. That's for our Ask Me Anything section at the end with me or for our questions with our special guest today. And if you're watching live and you want to join me later, we're going to have a master class. You can still sign up for that totally free. It's at vibrantmusicteaching.com slash grit. Let's get to some of the latest news from about, around and about the music teaching sphere and then we'll have our special guest. All right, so personal update. <laughs> I've been working on lots of things and I've actually rearranged a few things in the office. So if you're thinking it looks a little bit different, that is why I've been rearranging a few things around here. Uh, to make things work is something we all have to tweak and change uh, now and again. We have been focusing on motivation all this month. So we had a podcast episode last week, which was about growing grit and sharpening your students' um, stick to itiveness. Sorry, that was today. And then motivation masts was last week. So we've been talking about motivation, building it to our masterclass, which is on today, which I'm really looking forward to. And we had a new YouTube video last week, a shorter form video versus this live show. So that was about what to teach a new adult piano student. And actually, I had a dummy student in that video, which was my husband. Gee, so he was a very good sport. And he did that show with uh, that video with me, um, which I, a lot of you said you really enjoyed seeing him learning. And he was yeah great for doing that with us so that we could demonstrate some of those ideas. So if you have any new adults joining your studio, that might be one to check out. And then lastly, we had a very special blog post, which was a roundup guest post with several different members and some of their different interpretations of what we call the challenge board here in my studio. So the challenge board is something where I share with Vibrant Music Teaching members and it's a way to motivate students hence the monthly theme fits right in. It's a way to motivate students to learn scales and chords and all of those other things that maybe they don't always practice as much as they should. And different vibrant music teaching members have been using it in different ways. So that we did a great roundup post put together by a wonderful content manager, Sarah, about how different teachers are using that and the different ways that you can motivate students with that kind of a program especially if you want to get out of an exam system or festivals or other competitive environments, that could be a great one to check out. So that's the latest news around here, but I know you're all dying to meet our guests, so let's get into our main topic and let me introduce her. All right, today we have a very special guest, June Armstrong, who is a piano teacher and composer, wonderful composer, from the same island as me, from up in Belfast, and she has this new book out, which is called Take 10, and it's wonderful. I mean, I've been addicted to playing through this, and I will grant you part of it is that I have my new Kawhi hybrid piano, which is just gorgeous to play, so any excuse to play it, but I've been playing this on repeat. They're wonderful pieces, but beyond even that, they're about introducing your students to improvisation. So some really special ideas that June is going to share with us today about how to use these pieces and why she created them in the first place. And I'm delighted to welcome her back. She is our first return guest to the show. So welcome back, June. 
Thank you, Nicola. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. Hopefully everyone in the chat can hear you okay. They'll let us know if not. So good to have you here, June. How are you? Thank you for having me back. I'm fine. There does seem to be quite a time lag between us. Oh yeah, a little bit. Hopefully it's something we can work with anyway. Yeah. It's quite strange that we're both in Ireland. I know. <laughs> we could drive to each other in a few hours only. Yes. So, so June, tell us more about this book and why you decided to write it. Why, what inspired you to create Take 10? Oh, well, that's quite easy. Um, I had a, a piece called Dusty Blue, which was has been on three exam boards recently, and it was very popular. And I thought it'd be lovely to write a book, uh, which had lots of pieces like Dusty Blue in it. So that was my motivation. And I, I'm really, really glad that I did write it because I reawakened my love of jazz. So that's been quite exciting. Yeah, wonderful. And, um, sorry, one second there. So, um, in something that's a little bit different about this book is the way that you're using improvisation, right? So, is that something you've always included in your studio? Is it something that you've been inspired to include more recently? Where does improv fit in with your teaching? Um, well, I, I only have a very small teaching studio at the minute, and uh, I we do improvise free improvisation with the kids whenever we were not online. Obviously, I can't do that now, but we would. I have two pianos, and we, we would sit at both pianos, and I would just play something very simple, and, and they can improvise along with that. And I would always make that um, quite a substantial part of their tuition. Uh, actual jazz improvisation is slightly different and uh, I decided to extend this book to include uh, simple ideas. Uh, I've, I've made a playlist on YouTube and uh, there's lots of, it's called Improvis Improvisation with Take 10 and there's all I lots of ideas on how to implement them. Uh, Nicola, you want me to walk on uh, or to talk about the, the different improvisation techniques. Uh, generally, if you've never improvised before, uh, it's pretty daunting. And uh, it's to be just, you just need to be brave. Yeah, it does take that bravery. But it's been hard, definitely, for many teachers in the online teaching environment where we used to have those improvised duets that we did, like you were mentioning, and it's it's tougher to help students make that leap. So any new resource to help students with that, I think, is wonderful. But yeah, I'd love to walk through some of the specific ideas that you're using in the book and how you use them with your students. That'd be wonderful. Well, there are no specific specific ideas in the book itself. Um, basically, improvisation. If you want to improvise with one of these pieces, you need to be able to play it really well. And you need to be able to play it in the jazz style. So you need to have a real groove going there. So that's the first thing you need to establish. And once you can do that, uh, you can do all sorts of exploratory things on a very, very simple level. And maybe Nikola, Nicola, you'd like me to demonstrate something? Absolutely. Like that. So uh, I'd start with something extremely simple. Uh, it's probably the, one of the easiest pieces in the book. It's called Reflections. So I'll just play a little to give you the, um, the flavor of it. And 
you probably noticed there that the left hand is merely walking down from A to E. So if you can do that, you can take the high of it. Then you're free to do whatever you like. Now, if you're improvising on a specific piece, you will want to use the melody that's in the piece. But you can just do free improvisation on a very simple bass line like that. And I'll, I'll just show you that. So I'm not on reflect. just completely making that up and that's something that you can do uh, which is quite straightforward if you want to actually improvise on the piece itself then you will want to develop the melody so I'll, I'll give you a little example of that so here's the opening play around with the right hand notes. And I'm just keeping the, the sense of the melody but turning them around. Uh, so other little tips for improvisation. So once you're very comfortable playing a piece then you can start experimenting. And we look at a blues piece now from the, uh, and it's called Panther Blues. And this is really one of the great ways to start experimenting with improvisation. I'll play the opening of the piece and then I'll show you what we're going to do. blues as such but it's it's got a very definite swing rhythm to it and you need to develop that so the the, the rhythmic foundation of jazz is terribly important and you can practice that with just one note so if i play the the, the left hand piece and you're not using the actual melody you're not reading the music you're just reacting so that's one of the very important things uh, to learn to do that you're very flexible doing that another little tip is to just play around with the melody ever so slightly um, let's look at the piece on the next page which is camel train and I'll play the opening few bars slightly and you, you're, you're actually starting to improvise so instead of playing at the opening which is what is written you could do and go down to C you could go up to G and instead of the D use the G so I'll just put that into the practice I'm not using the actual music. Uh, another really good little idea is doing very little. 
and when you're improvising and leaving lots of space. So let's pick another one and we'll have a look at that. Um, how about, I don't know. And I don't know is a very lively um, little piece, but we'll just see how little we can do uh, with the right hand. But first of all, I'll just play you as it is. <laughs> blues and so you can do a lot less so we've played it through and now you're going to improvise time and leaving space is, a, is another really good thing to do and one other little thing is called displacement where you play something but you play it in a different part of the bar so we could try that with um well we've had panther blues haven't we um jazz band blues then rather than one, two, three, we could put that into a different part of the bar. And then rather than move it and put it a little bit later. So that's when you, you use the same motif, you use the same rhythm, you use the same notes, but you put them somewhere else. And that's also something to do as well. So those are just a few ideas. Those are all wonderful and great tips along the way there. I love that last idea because I don't think I've ever had a student do that. So that's a new one for me. I've used the idea of one repeated note before, and I think that's a great way in to have a student. Yes make that note as interesting as possible um is a is a great exercise absolutely yeah it, it's um so it really when you take a piece like the pieces that are in take 10 you take something like that you can do anything you want with it you know you're not you're not don't have to read it exactly the way it is and when you're improvising i think the other most important important thing to remember is you can never do anything wrong yeah never if you've done something you don't like you just move off that note somewhere else yes exactly there's no way and it, you, to really, fail you, it. Can't, you can't do anything wrong you a little example let's say so you'll make up a 12 bar blues and i just start to improvise and there'll be things that i don't like but i'll just go somewhere else did it matter <laughs> i just went back to the the what i'd started with and it sounded like well she meant to do that <laughs> so you can never do anything wrong if you don't like the sound of a note move off it yes i love that and we can reinforce that as teachers not even i mean by literally saying that but also by when students do make a mistake saying oh that was that was a cool note that that really added some flavor there you know encouraging those f naturals that they play by mistake or whatever when they're supposed to do an f sharp supposed to right and it's really encouraging as well i think for students and teachers to hear a composer saying no mess with the pieces like it's not supposed to be 
just the way it is on the page. You wrote but beautiful pieces, when they, when... but they could be taken in other directions as well, right? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, it's especially with jazz, it's an open book completely. You can do whatever you want. And uh, I, I, for myself, I, I always get quite annoyed if I if there's somebody's playing one of my pieces at a festival, say, and the adjudicator gets up and says, oh, well, you didn't do the piano at such and such a place. And basically, I have to put in directions to give people some idea of what to do. But if you're creating a musical performance and you prefer a forte at that particular place, I'm very, very happy with that. And, and I have a disclaimer in all my books which says, you know, things are at the discretion of the performer as long as it's musical. I love that. Yes. And <laughs> which judges maybe didn't pick them up on that. If it is musical, like if they made some, if they were just playing Forte the whole time because they're just bashing the well, kids, that's no, one that, thing. That would work. Yeah, that, that's, that's a different. That's oh, yeah. a different story. I but think if they made a decision. We're very high bound by you have to do what's on the page. And the other thing that a lot of people don't remember is it, it's a very minimal amount of what's actually on the page. The music's much bigger than that. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And you can put everything on the page. Yes. And even in your improv example there, they can you can do less than that. Like you're saying, you can take yeah. things off it, which is which is great. And I think a great lesson that one in rests <laughs> and yes. and how important they are. I mean, students tend to undervalue them. I see that a lot in their composing project. And the students who will really get it into the skin of composing, they will put in a rest. But those who are just like, I have to fill every available mm. space. They haven't quite got there yet. Yes, silence in music is very important. Without the silences, we can't have the music. Yeah. I'd love to hear a bit, June, about your own experience with improv. I mean, where did this, when did you discover it? Was it in your lessons growing up? What Did you come to it later? What was your experience with it in your own lessons? First experience of improvisation was on a course in England for piano teachers. And it was run by Lucinda Mackworth Young, I'm sure you're all familiar with. And she um, asked for people to volunteer to go up to the piano and we were going to improvise on D major chord. And I volunteered and I was absolutely terrified. I had no idea what was going to happen. And uh, I'm just the sort of person who does volunteer for things. And then I, I was terrified and I thought, I don't know what I'm going to do here. And, but that's the thing about improvisation. You don't know what you're going to do. So anyway, uh, we, we were all asked to play our D major arpeggios or whatever it was. And uh, so I just started and in no time at all, everybody was listening to everyone else and throwing rhythms backwards and forwards. And it was such fun. But the, the, the thought of doing it was, was very, very scary. Uh, so after that, I would have used improvisation with my piano pupils in the lesson, but as far as jazz improvisation goes, that didn't, um, I didn't become acquainted with that until uh, 2003. We had uh, a man called Robin Hewitt come and give some, a course to uh, the piano teachers in Belfast about the new ABRs and jazz syllabus. So that's where I found out all about jazz improvisation. And it, when I improvise, it's, entirely spontaneous it, there's no thought process going on whatsoever and if I was asked to improvise something and incorporate themes and do this that and the other I wouldn't be able to do it I just instinctively react and that is the most enjoyable process mm. and of course as I said you can't do anything wrong so that makes it even better 
No, but it's definitely <laughs> based on your extensive mu- musical background before you got there. So it's it's I think it's quite a different well, experience yeah. for a student who's going into that. Oh yes, very very, that, very that different. Structure. So I already had I already had the language. Yeah. I already had the language, and you cannot improvise anything that you don't already know. Mm. It won't happen. So when you are younger and you're just learning, you have a limited experience of music, but that's what you can use to improvise from. Right. Yeah. There was a great question. So for instance, if you, if you, if you learn, uh, say, one of these blues pieces and you've never played a blues piece before, you will then have absorbed that information and you will find that that will come through in your improvisation. Yes. Yeah. But you need to, to go from a starting point of what you know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's a question coming in there in the chat. How do you help students understand the melody in jazz compared to a piece that they can sing along to? My students sometimes struggle with a starting point with jazz improv and a phrase unlike a tune they can sing first. So... That's that's a that's a hard question, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I they have to listen to it, and they have to be able to hear it in their head. You can't mess about with something if you uh-huh. don't can't hear it inside. So it's about internalization. Now, as far as the question goes, with singing, it may not always be possible to sing something. Um, as kind of angular as you might find in a, in a blues piece. You know, it doesn't just trip off the tongue. So, but you should be able to hear it up here. Yeah, it's, it's an and interesting I question think- because the jazz lessons I had, my teacher constantly told me that I should be singing along to jazz and listening to it. So, um in order to internalize that, it is something maybe different. But I think with any foreign genre of music, if you don't listen to it, if you don't have that vocabulary, it's very hard for you to play it musically. So that could be classical for many students. That could be different types of music in the same way, to me at least. I don't think there's anything unique about jazz in that way to me. If you listen to it and you internalize it, that's my perspective anyway. It becomes easier. I, I don't think you can play jazz unless you listen to it. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's a starting point, um, listening and absorbing it. And especially with jazz, which is different from classical music, you have to absorb the groove and the rhythm. Yeah. You know, you have to get that thing going. Yeah. And, and you can get away without that by playing classical music. Well, one thing I did notice when I started playing jazz was that I discovered the groove within classical music, which mm. I wasn't always aware of. Uh, I'm sure you, you would all relate to if you're playing a Mozart or a Haydn sonata and you think it's all wonderful and you put the metronome on. And those bits are slightly different speed. (laughs) We've all experienced that. But if you absorb the groove of that speed, that will actually stop happening. It's quite remarkable. And I think it really improved my classical playing in that everything was holding together so much better. Yes, yeah. But I mean, yeah, it's almost like a next level of that basic sense of pulse that we need students to have to play with any rhythm at all. And then, yes, to which they absorb from listening to music in general, but they need to listen to jazz if they're going to play jazz. It is amazing how many students will say they want to play jazz or not so much pop, but a particular composer or something. And you say, OK, so what? you know, what's your favorite one to listen to? Or, oh, I don't listen to it. Well, then <laughs> we're not going to get well, anywhere. It's all, it's all an ongoing journey, isn't it? Yeah. And just while we're talking about the groove and jazz, uh, it's so important when you're playing jazz that you're involving your body. You can be quite disassociated when you're playing classical music. 
But with jazz, you have to have that bodily movement and tapping your toe, tapping your heel, you, you just your knee going up and down, whatever it is, uh, that is very who are very difficult to play jazz by themselves because they don't have the support of a drummer. Mm -hmm. They don't have the support of a bass who's driving the whole thing along and, and you have to do all that yourself. So it, it's tricky and uh, you just have to let go and, and really absorb the rhythm within your body in a way that would be quite unseemly if you were playing Beethoven. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. uh, it, it is necessary it is necessary to to keep everything together yes when i first started um my own jazz piano lessons i had to one of the first things i had to do was learn to tap with my left foot because i would tap with my right foot quite comfortably but not with my left and i needed my right for the pedal and she was telling me you yeah. have to tap your right. foot so okay. <laughs> yeah it, it is extraordinary and you actually have to learn to do it Mm. if you've never done it before and then of course once it becomes natural it, it will just happen automatically but it is something you actually have to consciously learn how to do yes. and it can be strange at the beginning for sure I, I think one great tool for that I don't know if you've ever seen this June Bradley Sowash has this thing he calls the toberine have you ever seen this no it's like a it's a semicircle but it's like a tiny tambourine, but it's a semicircle, and you put it over the top of your foot so that when you're tapping your foot, it's actually a tambourine. <laughs> so that you can be this one man <laughs> band, you know? Oh, that's fantastic. I get one of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he makes them himself. It's not a, a product that's out there that I know of, but he makes them and crafts them himself because he, he loves them for students. Oh. Well, that's a wonderful idea, yeah. You know? Got your own rhythm section exactly yeah so much fun and the, the toe doesn't lie you have to go with it <laughs> yes okay awesome well i love all these pieces so i'm not going to pick my favorite i would love for you to pick your favorite that we can hear in its entirety because you played some great little um, bits and pieces and examples of improv, but I would love to hear one or two of your favorites from this book. What do you personally oh, we love? We can do that. Restrict it to this book. I, I'm writing a, another jazz book at the minute, and all my favorites are afraid in it. <laughs> we'll stick with this one. Uh, I think my favorite has always been, and I put it at the beginning of the book, Top Hat and Tails, because oh, okay. it's a very sort of Fred Astaire sophisticated little very simple little tune but I just love that sophisticated feel so I'll play that one first awesome was beautiful i love that title oh, as well top hat and tails and uh well what else would i pick goodness it's always so difficult i i, I try not to have favorites <laughs> <laughs> i like your babies yeah I'll, 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 the last time i was on with you nicola i was talking about homages and writing pieces mm. that were a little tribute to a piece that I really love. And there's one of those in here. Did you pick it up, Nicola? No, I don't think I caught it. What is it? 
of its night journey. The little, uh, is Gretchen on and off, isn't it? Night journey, or is it Bergmuller? No, it's Gretchen. It, oh, um, that okay. Gorgeous. I thought it was Bergmuller. <laughs> Night Journey, a uh, gorgeous piece. Um, I must, uh, it'll tell me at the front of the book. How about that? <laughs> Bert, it's Gurlitt. Oh, yes. It is yeah. Gurlitt. Um, right. I said Gretchen enough. <laughs> it is Gurlitt, not Bergmuller. All right. Got the it's, it, it's Gurlitt. So this is just a little, it's just got the, the, the feel of it just the essence of it. So there's a little 12 bar blues. Um, there was a question in the chat there from Lee. Is this book available in digital downloads? And she's in the US. I think you're offering digital downloads now, are you? Trying? Yes, you can buy it as a single user license or you can buy a studio license. And if you want to try it out first, you can buy the single user license and then you can upgrade to studio if you want. Yes, that's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for teachers to test it out. For those who didn't see earlier, this is the book we've been talking about. It's called Take 10 and it's available on June's website, which is on the screen right now, junearmstrong.com. And as she says, digital downloads or hard copies. I always love a beautifully printed hard copy myself. Um, yeah, I, I just like so, I, mean, I, I should say why it is called Take 10. It, it's called Take 10 because every single piece is just written five fingers, five finger position. Yes. And you can develop that as you want. And then the final piece in the book is called Take 10. Um, uh, if you are familiar with Dave Brubeck and Take 5, you'll know that there's a very famous piece, wonderful piece in 5-4. So Take 10 is in 10-4. But it's not at all scary. <laughs> No, it's not. And I love the opportunity to introduce those time signatures to students at this kind of level. You know, it's what did you call it? Early intermediate. Yeah. Late elementary, early intermediate. So for those watching with a grade system, we're talking about grades one to two, two to three ish. One, one, two to three. You, you really need to be able to play the pieces fluently. So that mm -hmm. sort of, I suppose, takes you a little bit out of grade one. Um, although something like Camel Train, a grade one could very easily play that. But yeah. Some of them would you would need to be about grade three. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Even. Yeah. Depending on what you want to do with One of the thing I, things I love about so much of your music, June, is that the pieces are short. <laughs> I feel there's so many out there. The collections of pieces that are just, they're big projects. And that's great but students don't get through enough repertoire sometimes. And it's great to have a collection of cohesive, gorgeous pieces that are exactly the length they need to be, you know, one page, two page. Um, I just love that. Short and sweet. Good. <laughs> Not that we want them to be over, of course. Um, okay, well, thank you so much for joining us, June. This has been an absolute treat. One more time, people can get it at junearmstrong.com. It's called Take 10 and it is 
so much fun to play. And if you don't have a student who this suits right now, just get it and play it for yourself because it's really fun. <laughs> I've been loving it. Thank you so much for joining us, June. That was wonderful. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Awesome. So everyone, we are going to go into our web reviews now. Thank you all so much for joining us for that session with June and I hope you loved it. Um, I, I know I did, it was such a treat for me. Absolutely wonderful to have her here and to see the composer herself play her music. <laughs> it's always a treat. And yeah, like I said, that's genuine. I, I just got absorbed in this. In fact, it stopped me working last week. <laughs> <laughs> Santa died to me and I got completely distracted and didn't do my work, which is always a good sign. <laughs> so I absolutely loved it. All right. So if you have questions for me, keep adding them into the chat. We are going to go into our web reviews next. So to review what we're looking for on these websites, we want enough text, a clear call to action, Consistent branding, as in not too many fonts and colors, just a few. Showcasing the teacher, them, as they are. Real photos of them and their students, hopefully. And a simple menu structure. So let's take a look at the first site. This is Your Inner Artist with Sue, which is really interesting. So right away when I arrive here, I've got... I love the concept but I'm a bit confused. <laughs> That's my first thought. Um, so let me know maybe in the chat what you would think this is about or what you would think when you arrive at this site. But this is my first impression too. Hopefully you'll find it helpful. So I've got a cityscape right here. We've got, um, let your inner artist bring, bring joy and vitality to your life. So I don't really know where I am or what I'm doing. And it says, this platform is to help all of us find our inner artist, discover your own voice and listen to your intuition. And then the page is a little bit cut off. So I'm not sure if not everything is loading here. There we go. There's a bit more. Okay. So that had stalled me because I loaded it earlier. Uh, okay. I don't love this box because... If you're going to put a pop-up in front of someone, it really needs to be something incredibly worth it. <laughs> Meaning you should be asking for their email or pointing to them, them to something really important. But just saying something is upcoming, that's a bit too much of an interruption for my preference. Um, so yeah, paint and piano is coming in from the chat. Yeah, I would think it's about learning to paint, visual art, studio, right. So let's see what's really happening. So BA in performing, jazz, vocals and piano sounds like you are a piano teacher. So we've got arts, piano, music. Okay. So I'd say this is almost a complex situation like I have with my site, Sue. So I do empathize. Absolutely. It is not easy to make it work. So hopefully I can help you here. Um, because when you do multiple things, like my site does double duty for teachers and for prospective students, and that is challenging. Um, so it is, obviously you're trying to integrate the two of them together, which is wonderful. Um, but this page is a lot clearer than most of the rest of it. Just watch that side um, image. But we've got the visual arts and the piano. So that makes... That's a lot clearer than the home page, if you see what I mean. Like this, when I arrive, I'm pretty confused, apart from this logo. But this at the top really has me scratching my head a little bit. And we never want to make people work too hard, right? So gorgeous. Okay, I love this page. But I would maybe call it... Yep, uh, just gallery, I think, would do. But anyway. Um... Art lessons, vocal instruction. Yeah, we need to make all of this a lot clearer on the home page. That's my main thing for you, Sue. The menu is fine. The structure is fine. The look is fine. It's just this home page and the clarity there. So I would maybe have just like three squares straight away to say, 
I teach art, I teach piano, I teach voice. Literally that clear, if you can do that. So hopefully that helps, Sue. I think you've got the makings of a great side and a great concept here. It's really interesting. Okay, then we've got Joyful Noise Studio. This is a My Music Staff site. So my first recommendation always is if you can get your own domain name and set that up, that would be preferable. At the moment, it's it's dot mymusicstaff.com so if you can get your own web address please I would recommend that um okay so yeah this is okay it's just the the look of it that I find a bit confusing actually so sign up using this form I think it's fine to have this info, I just wouldn't put it on the home page. So on the home page I would just put a big button that says sign up and then the step by step process is fine but it could go elsewhere, like it could go here. But I don't think it's necessary on the home page. What do I teach? We need a lot more text here and a photo of you on the about page, that's really important. Again, more text would be great and it looks, yeah, that's an image. So the problem with that is Google can't see it. They can't read it. So I would put the same thing, even if you leave the image there, that's fine. But put the same thing in text below. Testimonials, again, same thing in text. Don't make it just images. Wait, let me just see that. Um, Okay, that's interesting. Blog. Oh, you really do have a blog. <laughs> Whenever anyone has a blog link in their menu, I do like to check it. Just because if you don't post anything regularly, it doesn't look great. And there is like a year between these posts. It's okay though. It's not, it's not bad. It's just when you go to it and the last post was like 2015, it doesn't look great. It would be better to not have a blog. But yeah, those would be my recommendations for you. And thank you so much, both of you, for volunteering for this um, web review. Now we'll go into our Ask Me Anything section next. So if you have any questions, just let me know. Alrighty, I'll do a quick search here, but I don't think I've any, seen any questions pop up that I haven't. Nope, it was just that one from Lee. So I think we might be good. I think you guys are letting me finish up early. Because you know I've got a master class later. Is that what it is? Thank you so much. No, not not actually early. We run right up to the hour because June was so much fun. Uh, we were hanging out with her and we um, yeah, definitely spent plenty of time together hanging out and listening to beautiful music. Okay, thank you all so much for joining me one more time. If you want to join me on the master class, that's coming up later today. VibrantMusicTeaching.com slash grit. It's in just over an hour if you're watching live, if you're watching the replay um, and you're a member of Vibrant Music Teaching, it may already be in the video library or you can wait and watch the replay there because you'll probably have missed the live session. And if you're not a member, you can of course sign up to Vibrant Music Teaching membership at vibrantmusicteaching.com and that way you'll be able to access the replay and the huddles coming up later this week. All right, folks, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you had a blast. I certainly did. And I'll catch you next week.